Hello, and welcome to the Nintendo Power Retrospectives. I'm Alex Case. It's time to finish off the, with the best of the rest for Nintendo Power's third year. We've got no RPGs this time, but we are replacing that with a few sports titles. Uh, before we get into the seven games we have to cover, I do want to take a moment to express my condolences to the family, friends, and co-workers of Satoru Iwata, CEO of Nintendo. I'm dedicating this episode for uh, to him, and you know what, let's the rest of the year as well, or at least the next year of Nintendo Power episodes. Um, I mean, under Iwata's tenure as president of, Nint of Nintendo, we've seen the release of the Wii U and the uh, 3DS. We've seen a tremendous expansion of the selection of games on the Nintendo Virtual Console, and Really, what this leads to what the show's about, about appreciation and enjoyment of classic Nintendo video games, or video games for classic Nintendo consoles. And it is so much easier and um, simpler to, to share those games with the world when whatever Nintendo platform my viewers have has a lot of those games on it. So, thank you, Satoru Iwata. So we've got a lot of ground to cover, let's get started. Ghostbusters 2, as a game, is not particularly fun. It gives you three lives, one for each Ghostbuster, and the objective in the early levels is to run to, to, to the left, at least the first one, not right, shooting ghosts along the way until you hit the boss. If you are hit once, you are stunned, effectively dead, and getting stunned three times is the game over. You also have a limited number of continues, but you don't receive any information on how many continues you have at the game over screen. Additionally, and I can't stress this enough, there's no pause. Now before you say, well, Dark Souls has no pause, Dark Souls is designed so that you can make an area relatively safe. You can take out all the enemies nearby, um, not have any enemies coming in to attack, and letting you set the controller down to go to the bathroom, go eat dinner, take a phone call, do any number of thing, other things, or just fiddle with your inventory. Ghostbusters 2 gives you a constantly ticking clock in the form of an unkillable enemy always approaching you from behind. So you don't have that option to just set the game down and go do other things, or pause it to go think about your actions. So there's that additional problem. Um, for that matter, the fact that your clock is, rather than a number, an enemy approaching from behind is also kind of frustrating because you can blow through some areas of the game fairly quickly. Other areas need to take more time to stop and think about. So the pacing of the game, or rather, the, op the opportunities you have to stop and think about your actions and how fast you can approach a problem depends very heavily on, well, how much of a buffer you've cleared between you and the unkillable enemy. Because um, with all the other enemies in the game, aside from the one who you have to run away from, you have to to approach everything very slowly and very carefully, making sure the forward edge of the screen hits the spawn point of only one enemy at a time, which also means the only real way to succeed through the game is through rote memorization. As I've mentioned previously, rote memorization does not good gameplay make, in my previous, in my previous episodes. Rote memorization doesn't allow for exploration or multiple gameplay style, play styles, or any number of things that really make for a experience that rewards playing through the game multiple times. So, this game just, I mean, licensed games during this era were generally fairly crappy to begin with, but this is really takes the cake. Skip this game. Next we have Golf for the Game Boy, our second Nintendo Golf game we've covered thus far. Now. Golf in real life and in video games is a game that I suck at, but I enjoy playing anyway. Also, as I know that I suck at the game, if I do poorly, I can tell if the reason that I'm failing is due to my own failings or because the game is bad. 
as you can see from the footage, I'm not playing very well. But I'm playing poorly because of my own failings. Not because the courses are poorly designed, because the controls are unintuitive, or because the game doesn't give enough lives or continues. Now, the game comes with two 18-hole golf courses with, for, with a total of about 36 holes, which really provides plenty of replay value when it comes to figuring out the best way for each player to handle, handle each hole, um, which is really where a lot of the replay value from golf games comes from in the first place, improving from your previous performance on a, on a hole. It also includes a save option, so you can save your game and pick up later, which also addresses my other little concern with golf, with um, portable games on the Game Boy and other systems, is it needs to be something where you can set the game down when you're, when it's time to leave the waiting room for your doctor's appointment, or you've reached your destination on the road trip, or what have you. Next up is Bases Loaded 2 from Jellico. I played the hell out of Bases Loaded 2 as a kid. One of the first games I got for my NES, and consequently, became, because I played so much out of it, after a few years of play, I became very clear of what the game's limitations were. As with numerous other baseball games, Bases Loaded 2 completely falls apart the moment the computer hits the ball. You simply cannot field as effectively in Bases Loaded 2 as the computer can. Players in the outfield seem to move more sluggishly than they do under the computer's control, and you can't move those players until they get in view of the camera, as well as the computer, who can manage their position without any problems. Additionally, while the behind-the-pitcher perspective works great when you're pitching, it causes some problems when judging dis with judging distance and position when you're batting. Other than that, the presentation's fine. Uh, the game has speech samples for the umpire, and while the game has metal bat sounds instead of wooden bat sounds, the impact of the ball against the bat sounds fine. If the fielding controls were better and the camera position for pitching and batting would vary, this would be a great game, but otherwise it doesn't quite work. Now, by contrast, Baseball Stars by SNK is a considerable improvement on the NES baseball game formula. While it uses the behind-the-batter camera perspective, it also tries to improve on some of the fielding problems for other baseball games by having the player's fielders move into position for pop flies. Additionally, you can customize and modify teams and save those teams for later using the game as battery backup. That said, I did run into problems with the batting for opposing teams, probably related to the fact that this is an arcade port. It feels like they hit home runs far too often, particularly in comparison to the player. It also feels like they can find the sweet spot for the bat far more easily than the player. Those concerns aside, Baseball Stars is probably the best NES baseball game I've played thus far, and actually one I'd rather have in my collection over the bases loaded games and RBI Baseball. Next is Radar Mission for the Game Boy, and this is, straight up, the best Game Boy game I've covered thus far. It's got something for everybody. The A-Type game is an excellent version of Battleship, with the option to play on an 8x8 or 10x10 grid against another player or the AI. If you choose to play against the AI, the game has an interesting way of escalating the difficulty. You have to make your way through three waves of enemies. And as you progress, the number of ships in your fleet decreases from 5 to 4 to 2. Meanwhile, the number of enemy ships goes from 5 to 4, but the number of squares each unit takes up varies. From a matching fleet, to a carrier and three destroyers, to a super carrier and three tanks. Additionally, the game give op gives options for lucky shots, which can destroy an enemy ship in one shot or hit five spaces in an X pattern, and aircraft, which will take up one random space next to your character, or your opponent's character, and will launch after 15 turns, and which has to be destroyed before a victory is reached at that level. And this can give you, or your opponent, a new lease on life. The B-Type game mode teaches a more fast-paced arcade game, where you have to destroy an enemy sub before it destroys your fleet, while also destroying the enemy fleet. It's quick, fast-paced, and it's an utter blast to play. This is certainly the best Game Boy game I've played this far, and I can't for the life of me understand why it wasn't featured in Nintendo Power itself, aside from perhaps the, some of the more simplistic elements of the game. Finally, we have The Simpsons, Bart vs. Space, the Space Mutants. This is a game with a basic concept that could almost work. 
We take a cue from They Live, with aliens being among us and only Bart being able to see them with his X-ray specs, and no one believing him. And from there you could get an interesting adventure game concept. That's not what we get. And so we get a platformer with a bunch of really dumb levels, with the player having to recolor various arbitrary items in the environment to prevent space mutants from using them to conquer the world. Look, I'm not asking for a deep or contemplative video game from the NES in this era, but when you're a stone th throw away of doing a decent idea, doing a film parody the way that we get episodes of The Simpsons that would parody some other films, not getting th that decent idea is a profound disappointment. But seriously, I'd love it if The Simpsons did a They Live parody, complete with, say, I don't know, Bart and Milhouse doing the fight from They Live, with either Bart trying to get Milhouse to put on the glasses, or vice versa. And if they did already do this, and I wasn't aware of this episode, please post Stowe in the comments. For my picks of the episode, Radar Mission is, frankly, the best game I've played thus far for the Game Boy. And certainly my favorite game of the episode. Um, however, I'm doing a one pick per system thing, so I need something for the NES. So for there, I'm going with Baseball Stars, the best NES baseball game I've come across thus far. So next time, Nintendo Power's fourth year begins, and we will be seeing a departure um, of someone who we've been seeing a fair amount of for the past three years in Nintendo Power Magazine. And the introduction of one of the more infamous gaming franchises. Um, so, got that to look forward to. Till then, I'll see you next time.